Hi, welcome to RG Lecture. So this channel is dedicated to the students of physics and this particular playlist of AC circuit contains all the videos which are a part of syllabus of graduation level physics. It can be BSc physics, physics honors, electronics, electrical engineering and many such courses. So consider sharing these playlists and videos into your college and class groups. Also join my telegram group link is given in the description. Hi, so in this video we will discuss the use of complex numbers and their effects on phasor. I have forgot to write here and their effect on phasors. So basically in class 12th AC circuits were there, in graduation AC circuit is there but the difference is now you have to study it with the help of complex numbers. Okay, now different universities, different countries, different board exams will follow different pattern. So there are three ways to use the complex numbers. There is a Cartesian form of complex number by using a complex number. There is a polar form. There is a Euler's form. So I will introduce all three of them. But as far as our universities are concerned, most of the universities go for Euler's form because it is much convenient than the other two. So let's start. Now, first of all, what is a complex number? How it originated? So complex number is a part of mathematical physics. Basically, we were solving some quadratic equations at some class 9th or 10th, you can say, and we reached uh, this conclusion, root of minus 3, for example. Now, we know that root of this number cannot be a real number. Okay, we know that root of this number or say any number which is in root and its negative number, we know that its root cannot be a real number. So, that is why we defined a number which is a complex number we defined a number which is a complex number. So do complex number have a physical significance? No. It is purely a mathematical concept. It is, I repeat, it's purely a mathematical concept. Why we use complex number in physics? Because when we study some few topics in detail, so these numbers help us to make the calculations easy. And when we finally reach to a result, we separate out the complex number and we focus on the real part of that result because a complex number has two parts it has a real part it has a imaginary part okay so when we reach to our result we basically ignore the imaginary part and our result is derived from the real part of course in bsc you will not feel the use of complex numbers but in ty you can feel that why complex numbers using complex number is easy so let's start so first of all, let us discuss the Cartesian coordinates. So in Cartesian system, x-axis is considered to be real axis. x-axis is considered to be real axis and y-axis is considered to be imaginary axis. Okay, so suppose I want to locate a point. So a point will be located, suppose here is the point. So it will be suppose uh, 3 in x-axis. So x here will be 3 and imaginary axis has the j unit. So suppose it is phi here, so it will be 3 plus phi j. Okay, so this is the way complex number works in the Cartesian form. R is equals to the x plus j y, you have to remember the standard form. Okay, so let's proceed ahead. In polar form, uh, I have actually drawn the diagram of polar form. Yes, this is the diagram of polar form. So in polar form, we consider a circular uh, coordinate system. Okay, for example, I want to study the structure of atom on a quantum level. Okay, so of course, this coordinate structure will be helpful because an electronic in electron or atom is a circular in shape. So this is the reason why we have polar form in physics. I gave answer to that explanation. So suppose now there is a point P on this circle. Now, how can I define my vector? So I need just two things in the Cartesian system. Also, I needed two things that would be my x coordinate and my y coordinate in the same way in polar form. Also, I need two things that is the angle with which it makes that angle which it is making with and the length of the vector, the radius. OK, so polar form is generally referred to as R and theta and OP is again my phasor we covered in the last video or we will see in the coming videos phasor will be everywhere okay so suppose this is my length r0 okay 
this will be the x projection this will be the y projection this is also the y projection you can consider any so that is apply Pythagoras theorem so you will get r0 is equals to the root of x square plus y square you want to find the angle apply tan of phi is equals to the y by x also referred to as the imaginary axis okay imaginary axis upon real axis y is always the imaginary axis okay in complex number and x is considered as real axis so in this way you can use complex numbers in the polar form finally let's start with the Euler's form now first of all there is a big theorem which is referred to as Euler's formula and you have a theorem in mathematics which is known as Euler's theorem again it is a part of pure mathematics is do not it do not have any physics behind it there is no physical significance but this is the result of that theorem what does this theorem states that if there is an imaginary number okay so i is a i here represents an imaginary number and x can be anything okay so i can represent that quantity as cos of that angle plus i times sine of that for example uh, there is something called as ij and here I write as suppose phi a for example a random example so here I will get cos of phi a plus j times sine of phi a so this is what is called as Euler's theorem this is what is known as so now I know from the last equation from the polar form that x can be represented as a r cos of phi right you are in graduation I hope you know this okay you can represent it as r cos of theta fine and similarly y can be represented if you do not know so simply apply cos of phi cos of phi is equals to the opposite upon adjacent upon hypotenuse okay so what is adjacent adjacent is equals to the x what is hypotenuse it is equals to the r so eventually you will get x is equals to the r cos of phi in the same way for sine of phi you can apply opposite upon hypotenuse you will get these two equations okay i have already wrote mathematics here because if I write mathematics along with you, then I will also be engaged in mathematics only. Okay, so x is equal to the this term, y is equal to the this term. From where did I got this? I got this from polar form. Okay, but I already know this. From where did I got to know this? From Cartesian form. Okay, so let's mix both of them. So let us substitute the value of x and y. And what I will get is this term, r is equal to the this one. And finally, let me take out r0 common. So I will get this. Now this is equivalent to the Euler's form of e raised to j times phi. Okay, j is a constant with sine of theta, right? Here also it was a constant, here is also a constant and this is the angle. So finally I got this result. Now what can I do with this result? Okay, so let us take a pause here. Okay, let us take a pause here. Now what is the relation between the, okay, this is the conclusion of the complex number this is Cartesian form this is polar form this is Euler's form okay let us take a pause here and let me define the concept of phasers again okay so what happens with the phaser suppose I have a phaser which is on the x-axis okay and I multiply that phaser by a complex number j I am relating the concept of complex numbers and phasers please be attentive Okay, suppose I have a phasor on x-axis and I multiply it by j. So my phasor will get rotated by 90 degree in anti-clockwise direction. So what I will get is this. Okay, this is the physics now. This will be used in physics. In the same way, if I multiply a phasor again by j, again it will be rotated by 90 degree. So basically I can say if I want to reach from this to this point, I want to multiply it by j square. Again if I multiply it, I will reach this point. So this is j cube. This is j cube. So this is the use of complex numbers and phasor. Basically in physics you will just use this multiplication factor, nothing else. So to repeat, if I multiply a phasor by j, it will get rotated by 90 degree. If I multiply a phasor by j square, it will get rotated by 180. If I multiply a phasor by j cube, it will get rotated by 270. Okay. 
फेजर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय जे फेजर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय जे स्क्वायर फेजर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय जे क्यू फॉर एंट्रेंस एग्जाम्स पर्पस इज लेट अस रिमेंबर व्हाट इज जे सो जे इज इक्वल टू द रूट ऑफ माइनस वन सो व्हाट विल बी जे स्क्वायर जे स्क्वायर विल बी रूट ऑफ माइनस वन रूट ऑफ माइनस वन दिस विल बिकम माइनस वन व्हाट इज जे क्यूब जे क्यूब इज इक्वल टू द माइनस वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय रूट ऑफ माइनस वन सो दिस इज माइनस जे सो बेसिकली आई कैन से इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई अ फेजर बाय माइनस वन आई विल गेट दिस टर्म ओके एंड इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई फेजर बाय माइनस जे आई विल गेट दिस टर्म सो सेम कैन बी रिटर्न इन टर्म्स ऑफ दिस ऑल्सो ओके अंडरस्टैंड जे स्क्वायर कैन ऑल्सो भी रिटर्न एज माइनस वन सो डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज डेट सर ने तो वो बोला था यहाँ तो कुछ ऐसा है ओके सो दिस कैन बी ऑल्सो रेफर्ड इन दिस फॉर्म सो फाइनली देर इज अ मैथमेटिकल प्रूफ फॉर द सेम there is a mathematical proof for the same so consider what we considered in the last equations okay so let us consider this r is equals to the r not e raised to j phi okay so i have considered it it here let me change the color okay so let us increase the phase by 90 degree because i know i will get a multiplication of j right because if i increase the angle by 90 degree the phasor should get multiplied by j or vice versa if i multiply a phasor by j i will get the angle increased to angle increased by 90 so i have increased this phi by 90 here okay consider this term so what i will get i will get e raised to j phi this will multiplied and again e raised to j 90 so i will get both of these term now apply euler's theorem on this term so what i will get is this equation cos of 90 plus j sin of 90 what is this term cos of 90 is 0 and what is sin of 90 sin of 90 is 1 so i will just get a j from here okay this just gives me j so i have j e raised to this term give it equation number 2 multiply above equation by j because i want to prove that that my phasor will turn by 90 degree okay so if i multiply above equation by j so i will get this term rj is equals to the r0 j e raised to j phi okay just multiply this by j you will get the term in this equation now i have the value for this which is this value okay j e raised to phi it gives me this plus 90 so basically that is the proof if what i had previously i had this term okay but as soon as i multiply it by j i got the phase difference increased by plus 90 degree so that is the mathematical proof to what i said in the previous slides that if you multiply a phasor by j it will increase the angle by 90 degree it will rotate the angle by 90 degree so this was the use of complex numbers in our ac circuits i hope you understood the topic you can just take a screenshot and you can write it down yourself whatever i have written here okay so see you in the next video